what I'm driving right now? It's a little vehicle called Disappointment. Not in the way it performs. It's actually pretty wonderful. This is the 2020 Cadillac CT6. This here is a dead man walking. In fact, it's already gone, pretty sure. This is a rare bird, and even more rare is the engine under the hood. In the nose of this full-size luxury sedan is a 4.2 liter twin turbocharged V8 engine known as the Blackwing. Now that is one of the coolest engine names ever. It's fantastic. And the stats on this car are equally good. This makes 500 horsepower and 574 pound-feet of torque. And that's not even the most potent version of the Blackwing engine. It also lives under the hood of the even more rare CT6V. You see, this is a CT6 Platinum. This is the luxury one. And it is nice. It is nice inside. But it is not as nice as the price tag would suggest. As tested, this is $95,000. And this is not a $95,000 interior. It is nice. It has a massive multi-speakered sound system. It has massaging heated and cooled seats. It has plenty of space. It has one of the best adaptive cruise control systems on the market in Cadillac's Super Cruise system. In fact, I used that system when I drove from Orange County all the way down to La Jolla. Knowing that I need to pay attention because it is Super Cruise, not Super Take Your Eyes Off the Wheel system or the dumbly named autopilot from Tesla, I paid attention and there were four instances and there were four instances when I needed to jump in and interject. However, because I was paying attention, I assumed that the system was going to have an issue. There was one rough section of road where the paint, the lane markers weren't very well cleared and the sun was shining on them, hitting them. And as I'm come up, coming up to it, I thought, hmm, this could be tricky. My hands are already going to the wheel. Sure enough, it flashes red to let you know that, hey, take over for a second. Another time I noticed a Volkswagen Passat slowly, I could tell they wanted to cut me off and they cut me off and the system, it slowed down, but it said, you know, grab the wheel for a second here. S situations like that where I was paying attention and ready to jump in before the system even reacted to it. Now back to the price though. The interior is, like I said, nice and comfortable, but it's also drab. The wood looks nice, a little bit of trim, the perforated leather, it all looks nice. It does not look near $100,000 nice. The Panerai system, which I think is like 35 speakers or something insane, is fine. It's not that great. It, it gets a lot of praise from other automotive journalists, but I just think it's merely okay. It's a Bose developed system, which means, you know, you know whatever. Take that for how it is. One neat feature though is there's actually speakers in the headrest, which I didn't realize until I turned all the way around because my daughter had a question and my, that's the only time you really notice it's there. It just kind of envelops you with a little bit of sound there. So that is a nice little trick of the sound system. When you turn your head here, you can hear it pumping in, but it's not overly aggressive on your ear holes, your sound intakes. The rest of the car is nice. The chassis is very well sorted. The steering is properly weighted. This thing handles very well on that highway drive. It just kind of cruises down the road comfortably like a full-size luxury sedan should do. I have a head-up display that is clear and easy to read even with sunglasses on. The digital gauge cluster in front of me displays the information that I wanna know in a nice, clear manner. And this screen over here works well. It responds well. There's different driving modes. I leave it in sport, a little checkered flag stays up letting me know I'm in sport. And every time I get in and out of the car, turn it on and off, it reverts to sport, which is awesome, but I want every driver selectable driving mode to do, and most of them don't. But again, it's not a $100,000 car. It does not feel six figures special, even with that delightful kick-ass engine under the hood. Now let's talk about that. Cadillac spent a shitload of money developing a wonderful V8 engine. It's got the twin scroll turbos mounted inside the V. This is a hot V engine. In the CT6 V version, it makes 550 horsepower and I think like 640 pound-feet of torque. All versions are backed up by a 10-speed automatic, which is fine. It's definitely better than the 8-speed that GM used to use. This gearbox works fine. This is all-wheel drive only, which, okay, it's been raining the last few days in California, so I've appreciated that. 
The whole system drives nice. I just can't get over the fact that it's $100,000. And then even more crazy, like I was saying, the development of that engine, and it's a Cadillac only engine, and this car lasts two years and it's done. This car is already dead. That engine is one hell of a collector's item now. And that's a shame because it is a really good engine and it is not meant for other vehicles in the GM portfolio. In fact, it's not really slated to go into anything else in the Cadillac family of vehicles. And that is fucking crazy because this is a great engine, even though it has an oddly low red line at 6,000 RPMs. I'd expect it to be at like 7,500 or something badass like that. Maybe 6,500, I don't know. But it works really well. It sounds really good, especially on startup. This car is a shame. This car should be $75,000. Then I go, you know what? Okay, okay. Still a ton of money, but we are working with a lot of car here. And then the CT6V can be like $85,000 or maybe make the split 70 to 85,000. So there's a 15,000 dollar spread even though it's only 50 horse and you know less than 100 pound feet of torque probably get it fixed in the aftermarket to basically have a ct6 platinum v if you want it <sighs> this car kills me because it's really good and i think it's competitive with the europeans it's just not as nice inside it is nice it is just not hundred thousand dollar nice the sound system is good. It's just not worthy of all the praise it gets. The engine is worthy of the praise. The chassis is worthy of the praise. The styling is nice because it kind of looks sleeperish. It looks like a big Cadillac. And I really like that. I like the tall front lighting elements and the rear lighting elements. There's a lot to like here. I don't know if there's a lot to love. And at $100,000, you should love what you drive. It is quick though. There's a little bit of lag. That's because you're dealing with turbos and a 10 speed gearbox. Those have to spool up. The 10 speed has to go, whoa, 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 whoa. And then you go and it's fun. And don't get me wrong. Don't take away from this that I don't like the car. I really like this car. I wish it wasn't dying. And I wish the price wasn't fucking crazy. As tested, this is essentially, come on, buddy. Thank you for taking your sweet fucking time. <clears throat> there you go, that's good, use the blanket. 